Our next speech, uh, our ne next <laughs> speaker is uh, Associate Professor Ola Andersson, working in Lund Malmö. And uh, you are the man behind delayed core clamping. Can I say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you will uh, talk about serious separation and delayed core clamping during resuscitation. What, what happens? Physiology, physiologists. Yes. Yeah? Thank you. Oh, actually, if there is anyone who is behind delayed core clamping, it's a woman. And <laughs> she's a midwife. And her name is uh, Judy Mercer. And uh, she's eight years old, and uh, quite recently she did some sort of triathlon. So uh, she's a wonderful woman, and she's a big admirer of uh, Nils. I know that. She enjoyed a talk of you in May last year. I'm really happy to be here, and I'm so proud of being invited to talk here about something that I'm happy that you at least mentioned now, delayed core clamping in this uh, subject. Uh, in this place, I, was, uh, very, I have also a very nice memory, because I was awarded the first Hugo Lagerkrans Award here two and a half years ago, and that's also one of my proudest moments. So thank you, Hugo, for that. Actually, Today is also my father's 19th birthday. And uh, I needed to just show him for you and to give my regards to him. He died 15 years ago. But uh, this day is important because of that. Well, before birth, there is in a term infant, one third of the blood is in the placenta to exchange oxygen against carbon dioxide, and of course, to also exchange uh, uh, nutrients and waste. In a preterm infant, it's 50% of the blood that's in the placenta all the time. And when I started doing research, we knew also by a lot of studies done here in Karolinska, that if you clamp the cord immediately, of course, this blood will remain in the placenta. It's quite logical. The end, that if you wait, three minutes in term infants, a lot of that blood will pass to the baby, will be transfused, and it's, it's its own baby's blood. So in a, in a term infant, it would be one deciliter of blood. And that might not seem so much when you think about one deciliter of, uh, of uh, any uh, liquid, but it's for a 60 or 70 kilos person, it would be a little bit more than two liters of blood. And that would be quite a lot if any one of us lost two liters of blood. Or if we got it, we would be severely affected. And uh, I had been researching on this for many years when I saw these pictures, which are so natural for a midwife, but I'm not sure it's so natural for us that are working in neonatology. This is the umbilical cord when the baby is just born, with the two arteries that are a little bit more blue in the middle, and then the wider and a little bit less blue, more oxygenated blood in the vein. And in a, just a couple of minutes, this umbilical cord just grows, or it just empties. And it's so nice to follow, and it's so easy to understand that this is the baby and the placenta itself that regulates this. And uh, this is something that the baby has been controlling all, all its life, all its, all its uh, way in the uterus. It has been controlling the flow between the placenta and itself when, due to how it ne it's been needing its blood. And we like to call it optimal cord management by now. How do you do that optimally? Being here today, I would challenge you to call it that this is the ultimate ultra-early <laughs> intervention. This is like the hallway between the placenta and the skin to skin. This is how you enter f into the world of what we are talking about today. And it's a very, very important entrance. And that's why I want to stress the kinship among all these subjects, that this is 
something we need to talk about, and that I implore you to put in delayed cord clamping. But rather, as that is a quite <clears throat> a negative, uh, uh, like, you know, you have to delay something, but what you really do is that you allow or sustain the cord circulation that has been already there for several months. I think that's a much more realistic thing uh, to see or think about when you think about the cord circulation. So what has been shown? Well, in preterm infants or neonates, there has been several quite recent um, systematic reviews. This is the last. 3,083 infants born less than 32 weeks, if I remember. And the delayed clamping here is only 30 seconds, which is very fast, even for a preterm today. Still, it's been shown that that reduces the, the mortality during admittance to the neonatal ward with one-third. It's almost as exactly the same numbers as for skin-to-skin. And as for skin to skin, could this really, could this really make people or children to survive? C can it? It's hard for us, but I think it's easier in this uh, arena now with this audience and in many others to understand. And also, it uh, reduces uh, the all kinds of IVH with uh, uh, about one quarter. For term neonates, one might say that I'm ab absolutely one of those that has been researching this the most, and it started with a paper that was published in 2011 from a study here in Sweden, and that was initiated by me about then, and as I say here, me thinking of what to do with all the spare time I had, I wonder. <laughs> well, still, anyway, that's how it went. And what we could show in that study is that we almost took away all iron deficiency from these Swedish infants, depending on how you measure it. About 7%, 6 to 7% of four months Swedish children had iron deficiency. When you waited to clamp the cord, there was almost none. This has been shown. The, Sw the Swedish studies, the one to the left, there are two studies in the middle from Mexico at six months, and the last study was conducted by a team cooperating with me in um, Kathmandu, and still after eight months, the infants had 33% better iron stores. Well, is this so important then? Well, iron deficiency is very important for the brain's development. And what do we have? We have heard Niels talk about the dopaminergic neurons and how important they are. What has been studied is by Judy Mercer the person that is the, perhaps the mother or the grandmother of the uh, delayed cord clamping research. She um, did a study on delayed cord clamping on term infants and looked at the myelin and saw quite substantial differences or improvements <coughs> in the myelination, myelinization, both at four and 12 months of age. Now I have to look at, I think it here. Yeah. Okay, so that helps us to understand that this can really be something that's important. We followed up the, the Nepalese children, and we reduced anemia by 8 to 9 percent, up to one year of age. And anemia is, as you say, as you know, it's a quite disability, there is a disabling uh, condition. And just by waiting some, some minutes, we reduce that with this amount. And the same children, when we looked at the risk of having neuro de um, a de developmental delay, it was almost halved in all the different parts. This is before skin to skin. Uh, in Halmstad, in Sweden, we looked uh, through doing WIPSI, which is a uh, perform uh, uh, quite advanced psychologist testing on uh, the development and also had uh, questionnaires to the parents and could show that there were improved scores in fine motor functions, especially in boys, but also in social domains. And uh, yeah, we can skip that slide. 
And right now, we uh, came with new uh, recommendations on cord clamping in Sweden. Usually, it's between one and three minutes around the world. Uh, from in the autumn, we recommend cord clamping when the placenta is delivered for term infants, and at least one infant, uh, one minute for babies before uh, 35 weeks. We have done studies on 1,200 babies recently in three different hospitals in Sweden, and that no now the median is six minutes for cord clamping. And we have uh, looked at bilirubin, and there has been no higher risk of jaundice for germ infants. So my research has been directed quite a lot of this transfusion, and that, that would give a larger blood volume. But recently, we have been more and more interested in the continued placenta circulation that actually is there for a couple of minutes. And I believe, I don't have the proof, but the baby also decides when it's enough. Because you can see also when you took, take the blood gases that the placenta raises the oxygen, lowers the carbon dioxide, raises the pH several, at least a couple of minutes after birth, and that's no longer than that people have uh, researched it. So that is like having an extra lung machine. And of course, this will smoothen out this period from coming out to this new world. It's cold and it's there a lot of light. There is a lot of stressors. And on the way to the mother, or the father at least, there will be some connection that will help the baby at least not suddenly lose a lot of blood and will help the baby to regulate itself during the first minutes. And what we, th we look at now is that we see that there could be a correction of this metabolic situation. And of course, we think that that would be an improved vitality, higher APGA score, perhaps a reduced need of prolonged resuscitation and a reduced need of re neonatal care. And that, in the end, would might uh, be reduced mortality, morbidity, and improved neurodevelopment. We did have the opportunity to do a study, a pilot study in Nepal, where we asked 1,500 parents to, uh, if they would take a part of a randomized control trial. And what we could see there, there was that there was improved oxygenation uh, and APGAR. We couldn't really see an improved APGAR less than seven, but there was a pH of 0.07. There were three deaths in this. All three were in the early cord clamping group. No deaths in the delayed cord clamping group, but we, that was not statistically significant. But we have no reasons to think that it was uh, any danger to do like this, because we couldn't see any negative effects. Uh, my old associate in uh, Nepal, Asish KC, he has done a very interesting study with a lot of neonates that were non-crying in hospitals in Nepal, and they were about 34 weeks. And what they did, they were received stimulation, 2,563 of them, and half of them had, or 671, had intact cord, and the rest did what cord clamped. And what they could see was that the, the use of bag and mask were lower if you stimulated with the cord intact. The proportion of neonates with very low APGAR score was lower. And there was an 84% increased rates of spontaneous breathing if you had the cord clamped. We, did, we didn't do anything. They just watched and waited and let the baby communicate with its placenta. In Sweden, we are now having the uh, um, SAVE study, which is uh, like a continuation of the Nepal study, where we look at uh, babies over 35 weeks. It's uh, 600 we hope to include, and we do intact cord resuscitation for at least three minutes, or early cord clamping according to resuscitation guidelines. And we look at APGAR, admission to NICU, and neurodevelopment as the first outcome. 
and we have to randomize 8,000 waiting parents to uh, be able to include these 600. And uh, by now we have included, well, now it's 4,500 and a little bit more than 300 that has been resuscitated. There it that is, sorry. <laughs> and we use a stand like this with the Neopath, the suction equipment, the gas blender, the APCA watts, and the pulse oximetry. And we take that close to the mother's bed and we perform the suscitation at the end of the bed. Uh, and as you see, this is from a simulation. There is, it's, it's very seldom that the mothers have, have their trousers on. <laughs> So it's uh, Skåne University Hospital, the two sites there, Ystad, Hamsta, Nael or Trollhättan, Vänersborg, Falun, and very soon, or perhaps this week, uh, the, the Södersjukhuset or the uh, Southern Hospital here in Stockholm is starting up, and soon they are in the plannings also, uh, Mälla Sjukhuset in Eskilstuna will start up. And except for the neonatal outcomes, we have midwives, we have... Um, neonatal nurses and obstetricians, we are looking at uh, an implementation researcher. So we are looking at parental bonding, quality, stu quality studies on staff, parents, and implementation research. We are very inspired, but I have scolded the team in Linköping that has started doing almost the same kind of procedure in extremely preterm infants very successfully. This is from an instructional film that they do have and that you can see on the internet, I think, and uh, where they quite soon can put the baby skin to skin, within a few minutes usually. And, uh, but after some discussions, they are now have started initiating a, a study called Predecess, which is between 30 and I think 35 weeks, where they combine the the effects of delayed core clamping and skin to skin. Because I, I agree, when we do research, we have to show that it's safe. Not perhaps we are sitting here because we are believers. We think, of course, this, this will help. We have seen it ourselves. But we have to show that it is safe. And I think Sweden can actually help to lead the way, and some the Nordic countries, because the midwives and obstetricians, they are more at ease or positive to keeping the cord intact. That is quite something strange in many other countries. And the, if we have evidence of substantial positive effects, that's an important driver of change. That is the WH document, a very, very good um, evidence on. And then I have to say, write this again. Why do we do separate studies? Why do we have to do that? Why, sh why don't we try to find a package where the nurture, nurture science, or where, where we do, it, do look at it all? We really need to, to think that. And I think perhaps that all of you that now are looking and think, oh, we have to do skin to skin immediately, we should start a register at least, where I would say, please put in the time of cord clamping for the rest of the world will need to know that it's safe and positive to also um, document that. So please, when you start, or please even tomorrow, start documenting delayed cord clamping, the time for cord clamping, because the babies, they benefit from that. So thank you. Thank you very much, Ola. Any questions? Yes, please, Hugo. You have the oldest man. <laughs> 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 Thank you for a very nice talk. I just wonder, uh, what about the onset of breathing? 
because the placenta, uh, there are a number of inhibitory substances like prostaglandin and adenosine, which will be transferred uh, to the baby. And the other thing, uh, yeah. when I did neonatology in the beginning, it was very important with early clamping due to we were so worried about polycythemia, but we didn't mention that. Mm. Actually, in the Nepal study, the babies that had an intact cord, they started breathing earlier. So I, I'm not, I have read those studies about these uh, substances from the placenta that, uh, um, uh, that stops the breathing, or, 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 but, but it's not what we have seen. And it's also the same with the delayed cord clamping in uh, Nepal, which I saw. You had more spontaneous breathing within one minute if you didn't clamp the cord. So what we think actually is that, we wrote the paper of that quite recently, is that this larger blood volume will help the, the, to, to, to lessen the stress response, to have a more vagal response, for, to make the baby more relaxed, have a, a larger blood volume in the, in the lungs, and perhaps have it easier to breathe. And for polycythemia, yes, there is a higher hematocrit, but this has not been shown either in, in, at risk infants like... Uh, uh, SGA, small for gestational age, or diabetic infants, that it has been any problem. There is no, no study showing actually any problem with uh, um, clinically uh, pro uh, problematic polycythemia. May I, may I comment uh, on the bundle thinking? I think it's very important and uh, very good suggestion. I can tell you that during the IKMC study, we instructed uh, the, them to delay the cord clamping at least one minute. But I would like you to comment what is actually the effect of evaluate, evaluating the baby maybe 10 centimeters or so yeah. on the circulation. So uh, what, what has been shown is that the transfusion takes a, perhaps a little bit longer time it's because we had thought that it would be the contractions of the uterus or the gravity, and I think they might have some, uh, some uh, effect of the speed of the transfusion. But that might not be a good thing to, to, uh, to, you know, to, for us to help the baby. It's like milking. We think we always want to help the babies, to make it a little bit easier for them. But it's, there is a transfusion. Even if you put the baby on the belly, that was what we did in Nepal, and Judy did that in the myelin study. You put them in, uh, up on the belly, wait for three to five minutes, and the baby regulates it itself, or even longer then, because there is no risk of waiting longer. Um, hi, thank you for a nice uh, talk. Uh, I was wondering about oh sorry, such echo. <laughs> uh, I was wondering about the Swedish guidelines. Uh, why do you make a difference between a vaginal birth and a cesarean? Uh, why only a minute if the baby is okay and the mother is stable? And also, if you need to choose, would you choose skin to skin with the mother and uh, cord clamp, or yeah. because you're delaying that if you're delaying the cord clamp in a cesarean? We are looking at, the, the thing is that the baby, when it's born vaginally, even if it's a quite, you know, 9, 10, 10 APGAR, the baby's stress hormones are very, very high. And the baby needs to, to go out from that state to be able, because, you know, all the peripheral uh, and vessels are contracted. The baby needs to, to, uh, to take its first breath and to get pink to be able to, to, to gain all this blood. And what we have seen is that this transfusion goes much faster in, in the cesarean sections. So that's one. And but the other one is that we really want to do this uh, um, in, um, uh, Swedish guidelines to be evidence-based also. And there is just one contr uh, case control study on um, cesarean sections at three minutes. All, all the other studies that has shown good effects has been at one minute. So that might be different in five years, but that is what we know about now. Okay, thank you. I thank you. I think we have to go on to the next speaker. Yes. Thank you very much, Ulla. Thank you.